nice, first of all, is that this is going to be your J curve, and this is the greater curve of the stomach. This would be where esophagus is, so that makes this the cardia region. This is the end known as the pyloric. This is going to be the beginning of the small intestine. So when you open this up, some of the things going on is all the inside of this is going to be rugae. If I label these areas, this region up here is going to be the lower esophageal sphincter or cardiac sphincter. This is going to be pyloric sphincter um, for the end where it's going to regulate the flow into the small intestine. Um, when we look at the other regions here, we will also have, you know, so I already did cardia, that's just this top part. This is the fundus or the dome of the stomach. This is all body of the stomach and this is pylorus of the stomach. So all four of those regions are, are places that you'll have to know. I think I also put the, um, so I put the muscles, I didn't do the muscles, so we're good there. So those are going to be the things for the stomach. That's all you got to know there. This is my favorite liver model of all, of all the liver models that we have. This is my favorite liver model. And students oftentimes get this confused because it actually sits in your cavity like this. It's on the right side. The big lobe is on the right side. This is the inferior vena cava, which is actually in your back, so I have to shove this thing all the way in. When you look at this area right here, it's labeled as 19. This is going to be the falciform ligament, and it's not colored in, but this falciform ligament is going to be what holds this guy in place on the anterior wall and then also above to the diaphragm. Uh, you can see then the lobes, if we were to label the lobes, this is the right lobe. This is the left lobe. Going from this view then, we're going to see the quadrate lobe. I tell students remember that because it's four-sided. Q-U-A-D, quadrate lobe. And this up here is the caudate lobe. Okay. Now, think of it this way. It's going to be toward the back of the feet. That's caudate. So Q-U-A-D, C-A-U-D-A-T-E. That makes this left. That makes this right. The biggest one is the right. Okay. From there, we do all of our internal anatomy. This is the round ligament here in 18. I also see this big structure here known as the gallbladder. The gallbladder has a duct coming off of it called the cystic duct. This cystic duct will merge here with these ducts to form the common bile duct, and I'll talk about these next. This duct over here, 14, and this 14 are both hepatic ducts, but this one drains the right side, so this is the right hepatic duct. This one over here is the left hepatic duct. They form together the common hepatic duct. Can you see that there? And then common hepatic duct meets up with cystic to form this big guy known as the common bile duct. Okay, so one more time. The right hepatic duct, left hepatic duct, common hepatic duct, cystic duct, common bile duct. Okay, and all four of those you have to know as well. Um, other than that, we don't do a lot of blood vessels here. All the purple is going to be hepatic portal, and this guy is inferior vena cava. Uh, left, right lobe, quadrate lobe. Load, and you should be good. That is that. Madness. What I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of go through everything collectively all at one time. So this might be everything, but um, it gives us a start. So once again, you have your nasopharynx, oropharynx, laryngopharynx, leading here to trachea and esophagus. I'm concerned here about the esophagus because it's digestion. So esophagus leads to stomach. This is cardia region, fundus body, pyloris. If we take this off, we can see inside this is all going to be rugae. Rugae extend or, or allow for increased surface area of the stomach. This is the pyloric sphincter leading into the small intestine. The beginning of the small intestine is known as the duodenum. And the duodenum then will lead down here to other areas known as the jejunum and the ileum. Um, when I ask you those, jejunum is the middle, ileum is the end. So what we do in here is we ask you the beginning of the small intestine and the end, and we assume everything else is jejunum, okay? So, duodenum, jejunum, ileum is down here at the end connecting to large intestine. So when you look at this structure, you can also see over here, if you look close, this is all pancreas. It's kind of shoved in here um, right below the stomach. This pancreas has a pancreatic duct there shown in white. Pancreatic duct meets up with common bile duct shown here in green coming from the liver. This creates the hepatopancreatic ampulla. This is where we dump into the small intestine all of the bile and all of the pancreatic juice, and I'll explain physiologically why that is later. But you can see this duodenum here leading then to all portions of the jejunum down then to this portion. Now small intestine, this is the ileum of the small intestine leading with cecum of the large. This is known as the ileocecal valve. 
This ileocecal valve dumps everything from small into large intestine. This little worm structure down here is called the veriform appendix. It has no function for us. Um, but sometimes bacteria get stuck in there and it causes appendicitis. But for us, don't worry about it. This is going to be the cecum, the very beginning of the large intestine. Now let's go ahead and talk about the large intestine. What we have is going to be cecum, uh, the ascending colon. This is going to be known as the right or hepatic flexure. It's a curve, so it's the right or hepatic flexure. Okay, you can call it right flexure for all I care or hepatic flexure. Then you have transverse colon. Then you have the left or splenic flexure, descending colon. And then what you don't see here very well, it shows but on the other model, is the sigmoid colon. The sigmoid colon comes up like an S. It comes back around to form the anal canal and rectum, which is shown down here. So that's kind of the big story overall with digestion. You guys get that?